Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's live training. We are very, very blessed to have my good friend, David Banco from Dart Direct Mail to lead this powerful training on how we can all get better on all kinds of inbound calls, inbound calls into the agency where people are wanting quotes. It could be a response to a direct mail piece from Dart Direct Mail. It could have been a referral from a customer or a referral partner. Maybe somebody found you on the Google and they saw some nice reviews for your agency and they decided to give you guys a shot. Taking advantage of these inbound calls is super duper important. David's put together six essential things that we all need to focus on. I'm excited to learn from David today, and I hope that you guys are too. We are going to do some role play. We are going to do some role play, so I hope to get some volunteers to role play with me in about 30 to 35 minutes or so. We'll do some role play, and then we should have some time for Q&A. Uh, so there we go. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Uh, before David gets started, I do just want to give them a quick plug. Craig and I used Dart Direct Mail for years at our agency, and it was our one of our top sources of new business. Um, and I just want to thank him for all that he did to help our agency. But more importantly, what he and his team do for dozens and dozens of CWC member agencies that use their direct mail programs. I can't refer him better and more. So if you're an agency owner out there watching this call and you'd like to see about driving some high quality, high intent leads into your agency, I'd encourage you to reach out to David and his team at Dart. With that said, Dave, thanks so much for your time, my man. I can't wait to learn from you. Take it away. Thanks. I, I appreciate it, Joseph, and I'm, I'm glad to be here. Again, my name is Dave Banco, and I'm the president of Dart Direct Mail. And today, we're really gonna, just going to talk about ways about how you can handle the calls that you get from not only like a direct mailer, but from an inbound type of lead. And, and some of these techniques, if you use them right with, with you and your team, it's really going to dramatically increase the effectiveness of all of your campaigns that you're doing. And if your team follows the guidelines and avoids some of the pitfalls, um, you could easily see a 20 to 30 percent increase in the amount of items closed. I mean, this is like found money. I mean, you're already spending money on the on the type of campaigns and all the effort that's involved in here. But finding an additional 20 to 30 percent is amazing. And, and really, all it takes is some some training, some testing, and, and really some some practice to get it right. Um, so what we did is we've designed kind of like a six simple tips just to keep in mind um, and help guide you. And uh, when talking with these people, um, you know that are that are calling in on these on these inbound type leads. So yeah, one thing that that um, I after doing some research for this, I found that 92% of customer interactions happen over the phone. 92%, that's almost all. And 85% and of customers have reported that they've had a dissatisfying experience with the business here recently. So if you think about all the interactions that you're having, you know, and, and just putting some little tips and techniques into this, like I said, will dramatically increase your end results. So again, what I'm gonna to do today is, is, is go through some kind of some pointers and some things to avoid. Um, and to clarify, these are, these are incoming calls uh, from interested people who prompted, you know, whatever you did might've prompted them to, um, you know, reach out to your agency. So they're gonna be um, a little bit more enthusiastic. You'll find that your team uh, generally likes to do these calls a little bit more because it's not like a telemarketing lead or anything like that to where they are, uh, you know, where they have to warm up the lead. I mean, you're, you're already going to have kind of built in, um, you know, kind of excitement to this thing. But, you know, first of all, you may be asking, you might be saying, you know, why is a direct mail guy, you know, know anything about how to handle answering the phone at my insurance office? I mean, you know, we work with hundreds of agents all around the country and we work with them every single week and we, we do things like partnership with them so we have a unique um a unique kind of partnership that we have with them so they uh um so because if our campaigns aren't working well in other words we can make their phone ring all day but if they're not answering them and and closing business on this then the campaign ultimately is is a failure so we have a vested interest in making sure that their calls are, are handled properly and they're they're maximizing their their success. And, and again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the huge benefits of having kind of an inbound lead is you get that built in 
you get that built in kind of need. So you're not, again, not warming them up and you have that interest that's ar that's already there. And, you know, that's why these calls can be, you know, some of the favorites, but, you know, it's, it's, it's with this kind of this interest that's there, you know, comes some kind of big obligations and, you know, that, that you've got, you've got to meet their needs and expectations. And, um, you know, one of those is that, this is tip number one, is to answer the call in three rings or less. You know, they have some big expectations as they're calling in. Um, you know, 82% expect an immediate response from um, the, the business. And, you know, that's, that's a big responsibility, you know? So you wanna kit this off and you wanna get all these calls off on a good foot. Um, but, you know, if, if you're letting them on the ring, you're already going to start negative. So, you know, you want to make this a good customer service experience for them. And so answering in three rings is great. So 96% and there's a Microsoft study that I pulled up said that customer service is a critical factor in, you know, generating loyalty to a brand and prop phone response is, is just one of those things that you can do. And so you know, first that we have these um, things that, you know, are, are, are benefits of answering the phones quickly. Like I said, customer service is one of them. Um, and you, know, you could have up to 33% of customers consider switching to a different company after one poor instance of customer service. So as you can see, it's like a super important part to start off that, that call off right. Um, you know, another thing of, of why it's why it's important to answer the call quickly is so many other agencies out there have um, they're not answering their phones correctly. They are they're answering slow, starting off wrong, or it may ring eight, nine, ten times and that person has moved on and now they're calling you. And so when you have that, you know, immediate type of response, you have already built in kind of a positive in that in that customer's mind and you're creating a good brand image you know because when you answer the phone quickly you're showing them that you are responsive that you care about their needs and uh that that you're that you're fostering customer trust you know right away in the first first part of that conversation and also if you don't answer the phones wrong uh, social media these days is, uh, it can be a fickle thing. You know, if people are getting to the point where they're, you know, frustrated that they can never reach you, I mean, the likelihood that they're going to post saying, hey, I've never been able to reach anybody at your office so that lots of other people can see, well, that can be, that would be kind of damaging too. And the, and the last reason, your agency manager might have spent a lot of money to get that phone to ring. So it's even more critical to start off that conversation right and maximize the returns that you can you can you can get on this. So you're making sure that you're achieving success. I mean, the last thing, as I said before, that you want to do is get this started off wrong before you've even said hello. So you know, now that we've gotten to point two, uh, you know, or we've gotten to answer the calls correctly, now we're going on to point two which is really to start off the call positively. You know, reaffirm that, hey, that calling you is the right decision. People are gonna be kind of hesitant to pick up the phones in some circumstances. So when you reinforce the fact that it was a good idea for them to call you, um, then you're starting off that conversation great. Now, here's, here's an example calling script. You might say that, hi, thank you for calling our agency, this is Dave, how can I help you? And you can say, well, hey, you're, you're the exact customer that we're looking for and I'm excited to do, we're excited to see what we can, we can do for you and I'll make sure that we build the best plan for you. So you're starting off that conversation with that, that positive um, type of feel. And, you know, you could see how this starts off that conversation immediately puts the customer at ease, you know, takes away some of that trepidation that they may have of calling you. Um, and so now I want to put together a, a sample recording. So one of the things that we do um, is track and record 
conversations that are, are generated through our, our direct mail platform. So these are going to be live calls of people that are that are that have called in that are um, you know ones that that agents have answered. So let me play the, uh, the the first one here, which is a which is a is you can you can evaluate to how this conversation started and how it starts off. So let me play it here. real quick, real quick before you hit play, y'all. The volume on this first call is a little low, so I'm going to encourage all of you to kind of crank your volume up. Don't worry if you're not able to hear it perfectly. David had it transcribed, so you'll be able to see the words on the screen. But I just want to tell everybody, crank your volume up for a minute. Right, and we'll see some some goods and bads in this in this call. So here you go. Oops. Hold on, let me uh, start it here. Sorry about that, everybody. Let me try this. Here we go. It rings three times, then she answers. Mm -hmm. So goods and bads on that one, you know, she doesn't mention, you know, she doesn't thank the caller for calling them. She doesn't give that, that initial positive reaction to it. But what she does on this call is she listens to the caller's needs. So instead of just, you know, going right to it and, and going in, where do you live and start creating more of that, you know, just the standard information to grab a quote, she's really going in and saying, okay, it, I'm the person that you need to talk to. He said, you know, who can I talk to? She enforces that she's a right, reinforces she's the right person to talk to. And she sets up with the rest of the call, which was, let me see if I can help you save money. And again, that's the exact reason why the caller called. He stated that in it. So it's setting the tone for the rest of the call. And a lot of the callers that you that you talk with, like I said before, will have hesitancy about calling. So it's really important to, to set up that call right. Now, once you've got that introductory statement out, now you're moving into qualifying the lead. And by qualifying the lead, I don't necessarily mean that you're gonna qualify them to see if they're the right person for your agency. You know, I'm really gonna have, uh, and, and what I mean by this is that you're going to try and have them find out the reason or give you the reason why they're they're calling you. And that's what I mean more by qualifying. So in direct mail that in 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 other marketing things specifically, you could you can really target down an exact audience with demographics. But in this case, we really want to find out what prompted them to call you. So you can do good lead kind of questions and and and, and qualifying questions to this which kind of prompt extra, extra responses so you can really find out all the information that you want from their um you know and the reason why they're calling and how you might be able to help them so it's even it could be as simple as do you currently have insurance you know or what prompted you to call us today you know make sure that you follow up with confirmations again this is at the beginning of the call so that you want to confirm to them that, hey, th you know, thank you for letting me know that, you know, come up with that, with that initial conversation, but also listen to the calls that, you know, listen to what their answers are as part of that call. So I'm going to play a, a, another example, and we're going to pick it up kind of right in the middle of the uh, conversation and, and listen how she asks who, you know, what, what, who their insurance is with currently, and listen to what the caller actually gives up as, as a part of it. Okay. Okay. So as far as going down on the property side, who do you currently have your insurance with? I have Progressive. Okay. And I'll just tell you up front, I've gone through a couple of different places and they haven't been able to find it cheaper. It, and if they have an incredible increase here, from last yeah. year to this year, so that's been really well calm. And then I bundle my auto and home with progressive, so I may even get a little cheaper because of that. 
Do you see what she found out in this? By just asking if they currently have insurance, she got, they are with Progressive, they're shopping. They had their current provider, Progressive, had an increase in the rate. He's up for bundling. His renewal's on May 13th, and his renewal rate is 57.88. Now she knows what she's up against. She knows that he wants to save money and really doesn't have much loyalty to his current carrier. He's open to bundling and he needs to make a decision soon. So, and, and she knows what rate she needs to be. And that's all stemming from that, from that qualifying question. So you could see how that could then lead to other different conversations and that, you know, as she takes that down and into the later ends of this call, she uses that information. Okay, now that I know that you are paying 57.88, now you know here's ours, and, the, and was able to uh, close the deal basically on what questions she had found out here. So once you have those good probing questions, a good thing that's that's somewhat related is our next tip, which is building rapport, and if your team is treating these as like transactional types of phone calls, your closing success will be negatively affected. And while, you know, you or your team is getting the quote information, it's a really good time for you to go through and ask some, some different probing questions and, and create more humanizing like approach to this thing, you know, try and create that, that common ground, you know, that it, one of the uh, research company called Gong had, done a, a survey that said that 74% um, th that you can increase a lead success by 74% by asking 11 to 14 um, insightful and interactive type of questions. I mean, because let's be honest, people like dealing with people that they like, and more importantly, people that they trust. And if you build this rapport, you'll have a much easier, easier time overcoming future potential obstacles that you might have. Um, but you need to establish that relationship and even better, try and find some common ground. You know, obviously you wanna be humanized, you know, in, in, in this process. So, so ask some personal questions, talk with them like, like they're a friend and not just someone that you're trying to sell. You know, as an example, when you're asking them about, you know, what, what city that they live in, you can just stop and say, you know, are you originally from the city or did you move here from somewhere else, you know? Ask them when talking about their family, do they have kids? What are their ages? What are they into? You know, you can ask them about jobs. What, what do you do for a living? How long have you been here? But when you do this, you can also interject some um, information about you or the agency. You know, if they say, you know, oh, I've been here for 20 years, you can say, oh, our agency has been here for 20 years. You know, I had just moved here. You know, I'm looking for some great restaurants. Do you know any restaurants type thing? So you can see how that, you know, just creates that, that more of that, that humanized um, approach. Um, and, and here's another really good example about how rapport building is built. What I want you to, to listen to in this conversation is, is up to this point, and it's catching it up right in the middle of the, uh, of the asking the questions to get the quote. But I want you to, to listen to how the caller's tone perks up as soon as that common ground is found. Okay, I just actually moved the car to build this last fall myself. Did you? Did you get one of the new shacks? Well, that mine was built in the late 90s uh, over on Lincoln Street there. Oh, it's been a lot of people moving off of new ones too. They've been filling up. Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing a bunch of the Super Mitchell houses and. Did you hear how the caller suddenly perked up? 
as, and, and starts asking questions back. I mean, he even laughs a little bit, which shows he's he's dropping his guard a little bit, you know, and, and the, the agent you know, really finds that common ground because he knows the area well. And he actually uses this later in the call to demonstrate like specific things in that particular area um, and, and, and advises the client on some some particular types of coverage in that area that uh, that he used to close that that business. So that's it's, that's a huge you know thing is to just humanize that call. And kind of an extension of this is is, is the next tip. And that's to be genuine. You know, tone of voice is so important in this in this process. You know, 93% of a of a survey that I found showed that first call success is contributed to the to the callers and the callers tone of voice during the conversation. So you need to be genuine in the, in the questions that you ask. It can't just be robotic type of things. You know, you know, try and be as authentic and genuine as as you can because it has huge payoffs. You know, you're going to you're going to build that trust by being genuine and authentic. You know, because that person on the other end of the line is is you know trying to figure out from you is this someone that I can really put my faith into? You know, you're you're going to establish credibility by just being the expert in this and being honest and sincere, knowledgeable about the products because they're they're kind of judging you in this in this whole process as well. And when you can show that you're you're there, you're not just there to collect a paycheck or you're not just there to sell them some business, you know, you'll find that when you create that connection and you're genuine about it, that you're going to get a lot more repeat business. You're going to get loyalty. You're going to um, get repeat business. And more importantly, you're going to get some referrals. And you're also going to um, be able to resolve any issues that come up during that call. You know, not all calls go perfectly, obviously. There'll be situations where, you know, problems will come up at, you know, the different parts of the call. But if you've been genuine and honest, you know, you can admit mistakes and you're going to kind of get a pass because they're going to know that you're you're real, you're you're effective you know, person there. The other one is that, you know, when you're when you're genuine and when you're honest and, and authentic, it's going to really reflect the type of agency that you are. I mean, you're going to be more transparent. You're going to show more um, integrity here. Um, so I, I want to play another example for you. And this with this we're going to pick up at the beginning of the call. But I want you to hear kind of like the pleasantness and the tone that we have talked about um, being really important. I want you to listen to um, kind of how they take a little bit of extra step just to be, you know, um, a little bit more upbeat than the normal. Me, Annika. Well, I think it was the first of this year uh, I received a, I guess, a quote from him. He had the picture of my house on it and says if you're paying this much, you may be paying too much. And I was wanting to get a quote on the home office. Sure. Have we quoted you before? No. Okay. What's your name? Lee. Well, let me get you a cell phone. Hold on just a second, okay? Thank you. So when Jeff gets on the call, do you hear the first thing he did? He let Laney know that he appreciates her call. I mean, it's positive. It's 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 setting that tone for the rest of it. And he shows he cares because he took just a couple of extra seconds to make sure that he knew her name. So that transfer between the two, which often happens, um, it, it was done to, and he made sure that he got his name. So he starts it off and starts it on a positive note, you know, and, and, and being genuine to start it off is going to be helpful. Now, was that the perfect way to answer the question? Did they give that reinforcement back? No, but, you know, setting off that, that uh, positive tone on this call is extremely important. 
you know, and, and obviously as, as, as you're going through this process and you're going to get, you know, you're going to have to go some questions for them to get them to get to the, the end quote, obviously. But even when you stop and answer those probing questions kind of in, in the meet, in the middle of this. So when you're asking for the home address, you know, that, that um, you might say, where's that exactly? I, I've heard that's a great part of town, you know, you know, let me let me see what I can do to to protect that home of yours there. You know, I, you know, you might say, oh, I, I know those homes. Those are beautiful in that area. Let me see what I can do to help you on that one. And similarly, when you're asking about cars, don't just ask what the VIN number is, how many miles they they do it. But you may ask them things like, hey, do you like that car? What color is it? You know, cool. And even though that color doesn't obviously matter, when doing that, it gives them a chance to brag about it. Again, you're you're just becoming more authentic as a part of this a part of this uh, equation. So I'm going to play another um, quick quote here, um, so that you can see a little bit more about you know what one agent did when when she was asking about the 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 uh, customer's car, which is a Durango. Listen to it here. And in order to give the best bundle rate, we do like to get the automobile. Can I get the year, make, and model of your vehicle? See what we can save you on that? Yep, it's a 2021 Dodge Durango. Okay. Oh, I love this Durango. Yeah, it's really nice. I, I fell in love with them back in the day in the early 20s. I just loved that body style back then. Um, and is that the only vehicle in the household? Yes. Okay. And you see how she made the customer feel good about his vehicle? And the fact that he even started to laugh again is another one that's just a, just a positive sign that customer's bringing his guard down, he's dealing with a real human, and uh, she's actually gonna use this information about the Durango later on in the call to help sell that policy. So, you know, you could see how rapport just kind of opens up the entire conversation, and so, you know, now that now that that rapport's built up, you know, it's time to kind of cash in on this, and it, that leads us kind of to our next part, which is that you got to get them ready to close and use all that information that you gathered a part of them. So tip six is set up the sale and assume the close. You know, so that once you, once you've gained their confidence and and created that connection, um, you know, go ahead and use kind of like a script like this to um, go ahead and start working on setting up that close. So it might be something like, you know, hey, you know, Mrs. Jones, I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to help you today in your homes and your car and the, the umbrella policy that we talked about. You've made a lot of great decisions on coverages and deductibles today with me. And, and I've looked at and got you every single discount possible. Everything looks great. So you see how that's kind of setting up that close. So, so follow into the next part of this and saying, you know, hey, how, how you choose to pay will determine your final rates, but we will bill your mortgage company today for the home policy, which is only gonna be X amount of dollars per year. And I will get everything sent over them today. Now for your auto policy, we'll have some options. Do you see that it's kind of setting this up? You hadn't talked about price until right then. And now you've, you've kind of just kind of rolled over that so you can get to the entire conversation all about, you know, the autos and all, all about their, you know, other products that they might be, uh, and other lines that might be interested with you. So you're setting this all up to, to now seal the deal that we call it here. So um, don't ask them what, when you're going through and, and you give them that rate, you don't want to ask them, well, what do you think about that, you know? How does that sound? Or can I email you the quote? It's really um, normal for a lot of agencies to work up the quote, send them an email back, and then try and follow up with them days later. But what happens in this case is you're trying to then rebuild later on, days later, or even hours later, doesn't matter. But you're trying to rebuild that confidence and rebuild that trust that you have built all through the conversation up to this point. It's almost like you're leaving it right at the finish line. So what I'm recommending that you do is keep them on the line. 
get them to that point where you can where it's very easy for them to sell yet or say yes so a great kind of script policy to this one is like do you agree that the policies would put together for you or your family put you in a much better position than you are with your client agent now well, well great i do as well now let's get these policies in place so that we can get you to the protection that you need and deserve you know i'll send you the home policy to your mortgage company like i said today to pay and so which account do you want to use for the autos and the umbrellas do you see how you're not saying do you want to do this that you're leading right to that close part where again all they need to do is say yes so that'll lead you to two really type of conclusions a you're going to get to that yes or b you're going to you're going to get some real um, objections to this and, and and what i mean by real objections you're going to get the ones that you know you're going to if you've established that honesty throughout the process you're going to get what really is their concerns and overcoming the objections I mean that's a that's a that's a whole webinar topic all by itself. Um, so so we're not going to go over really those in here. But I'll tell you that um, that the CWC group has some fantastic talking points um, that uh, that they can do that they can offer you, and they'll 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 have lots of different objections and their scripts that uh, that go around that. But what, I, what I'm telling you is that through this entire process. Overcoming objections will be a whole lot easier if you have established confidence, you built that rapport, were genuine, and gained their trust and, and became more human to them. So those were the six um, that, that we've kind of come up with. And I hope you gained a little bit of insight on how best to talk with you know, these call-in leads. And if, you, if you're an agency manager, maybe how you can um, you know, be able to listen to these calls and, and talk with your team and, and better help them um, to, close, uh, to close more business. And becoming good at this is, you know, it, it it's, can be a tough thing to do, but with practice, you and your team can, can really maximize the call responses that you're, you're getting and, and be able to, uh, um, like I said, close more business. And so we'll go into um, the uh, um, we'll go into some and, and Joseph will with some uh, role playing here. But before I do that, I want to I want to kind of talk to the to the agency managers, um, you know, team managers. I'm very happy that uh, you were you were able to to be on the call, too. But just for a moment, I want to tell the uh, the agency managers a little bit about kind of what we do here at Dart um, and, and just so you can get kind of an idea for you. So. We, we are a full direct mail company. Direct mail is all we do. We don't do digital marketing. We don't do TV or radio or any of those type of things. We are just fully concentrating on direct mail. So we're making uh, that process easy for agency owners to you know, help get their phones ring. You know, we're just, we're choosing the best audience. We're um, creating the perfect piece and designing that specifically for your agency. We're, we're helping you generate those quotes and those premiums. Um, we're mailing out on a weekly basis to make sure that um, all of their, their pieces are landing at just the, the perfect times when they're renewing. We track the pieces all the way to the home. We have a special relationship with the uh, uh, USPS, so we know exactly when these pieces are hitting home. And, you know, as you've heard on the, on the, uh, the call today, that we, we track all of these campaigns and all of these uh, phone calls that are generated from the pieces so that we can even track and record that just to make it a better experience and to be able to improve the team's success. So the bottom line is we, we really make this easy as possible uh, for agents and, and to, uh, like I said, get the phone to ring. We have a couple of different types of pieces that we put out. Um, you know, we've got our street view home letter, we've got a condo letter, we've got a, uh, a newer life insurance mailer that we put out, or even boat letters. And we're constantly putting that together and constantly creating new pieces depending on what, what the market's doing and what agents kind of, kind of tell us throughout the process what, what's really needed. And so I want to reward you guys for, for, for listening to me, like, go on and on today about all this stuff. And I want to give you an example of, and I want to give you an incentive to uh, uh, to go with us, we have a we have a bump up rate for uh, being part of CWC. 
Uh, and that means if you have like a thousand pieces a week, that we bump you up to the 1500 piece rate. In 1500, we bump you up to the 2000, 2500, and, and, and so on. So that could make your rate as low as 65 cents a piece. So I put on the screen here, you know, numbers that you can call either me or Tim. We'd be happy to answer your calls and uh, happy to talk with you a little bit more about your agency, answer any questions. But I'm going to put something up that, that I think is really cool. Um, and that is our uh, QR code, which could send us now a live text. So if you could pull out your phones, um, take a quick snapshot of this QR code, and it's actually going to contact us directly through um, our chat messaging feature. So do that. Send us a quick note. We'll be uh, we'll be happy to uh, you know just say hello via via text on that. But it gives you kind of an idea of um, what QR codes are doing, and that's a fantastic topic. So if you ever want to talk to us about that, you know, be glad to glad to talk with you about QR codes and why you should be using it every day in your agency. So with that, um, I want to turn it back over to Joseph. And uh, let's let's jump in some role play, and then after that we can we can talk about maybe any uh, questions that you have. Very cool and awesome presentation, and man, I love how you wove in CWC scripts and top paths into your PowerPoint. You didn't reinvent the wheel. You took what what we have been teaching for years and included it in your in your top paths. I think this is awesome. I think this is awesome. Y'all do this QR code thing real quick if you haven't yet. I just did. I just did send the, send the text to you. Um, you or someone on your team can then immediately start dialoguing back to me. I think that is amazing. That is amazing, seriously. And the fact that they can do that on, on mail pieces. Y'all, a lot of people will text you all day. They won't answer the phone for a four minute phone call, but they'll text you for an hour, fine. Right. What we want to do is communicate with our customers and prospects in the manner in which they want to communicate and that they will communicate back. So David is amazing. Y'all agency owners out there, I highly recommend that if you're looking to drive more high intent leads to your agency that you reach out to, to David. Let's do this. I'm going to take over screen share and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to do some role play here in just a second, y'all. Well, crud, where's the safari that I want to share? See, this is what happens when you have four monitors. Hey, man, stop sharing for a second. I'm curious if it's uh, not showing me. If you'll just hit stop share. I've got my Safari here. And then here we go. Okay. Share screen. Here we go. All right. Okay. So I am sharing uh, our platform here. So if, for those of you that are CWC members, you know what Wiggins University is. Here we are on the training center. This is where we host all of our training courses, all of our video courses. We have our newest courses up here. Y'all, if you haven't watched some of these latest success stories, you're crazy. Like they're amazing, uh, mainly from producers, a couple owners. I put them here at the top of the new courses just so that y'all can learn and see what other team members and other agencies are doing. All these new courses on retention, cross-selling, rate increases, our live trainings for this year, Allison's tips of the day, which she adds to almost every single day. And then of course, you've got all of our course sections here, the sales courses, service courses, life retirement, and all of our live events and live trainings. Well, these are all the videos. What about the documents? Let's go back home and take a look at the documents. I want to make sure that all team members have this pulled up at all times. So here we have the documents on the platform. All team members will only see this one folder. If you're an owner or manager, you'll have both folders. So team members folder, what's the very first document? CWC scripts. What's beautiful is it opens it up in a Google Doc. So y'all can see in real time the CWC scripts. You'll see when I am last made a major update, so new scripts that I've been added. Here are new scripts that I'm going to be adding over the coming months. If you click on this little history icon, you can see every little change that I've made. So y'all, I've been making lots of little changes too. Lots of little changes. So you can literally have the current version of the CDBC scripts pulled up at all times in, in, in your Chrome browser. So we've got our building rapport top path. We've got our direct mail top path, our assumptive close top path. That's where he got a lot of the information for the slides. And I love how you wove CWC stuff into, into your stuff. I think that's awesome. So let's do this. Let's do some role play. Let's do some role play, you guys. Send me a chat right now. If you would like to volunteer to role play, I can get a couple of participants. So just send me a chat 
right now. Now I got my attendees when it pulled up and or raise your hand. I'm going to lower Teresa's hand. Raise your hand or send me a chat to role play. Don't be shy, team. All right, Teresa Sharp, I'll try. I like it, Teresa. Teresa Sharp stepping up. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Teresa, I'm going to make you a panelist, Teresa. Give me at least one more, y'all. Don't be shy. This is where you grow. Get outside your comfort zone. Give me another volunteer. Chat me right now. Javier. Javier. Thank you, my man. Javier, I'm making you a panelist. Okay. Promote the panelist. Now they should be joining as a panelist any second now. And y'all, if you have your webcam, feel free to kick them on, but you don't have to. Um, uh, I need to make there you are. What's up? Hey, good afternoon. What's up? hey my I'm man, I am amazing. How about you? I'm doing great. Can you see me? Because I see the the image here and it's black. Yeah. Do you have a cover on your webcam, perhaps? I'm gonna I'm gonna say no because I can't even see where the camera is at. So I I I I'm guessing there's no camera. I bet there is one like in the top of your uh, monitor or something, but don't stress. Don't worry about it. But I think you have one because it's not like a gray thing. It's like there's a cover on it. Right. Javier, tell us where you're from, my man. Um, I'm from Chicago. From Chicago. Very cool. And which agency are you with? I'm with David Finkelstein's agency. Very good. Very, very good. You're with a great agent. I'm so glad to have you in the program and so glad to have you volunteer to role play. So here we have the CWC scripts. What I'd like to do is scroll down and let's go to the direct mail script, right? Because Dave's here to talk about direct mail. Let's go uh, to the direct mail script. Then we can potentially work on um, anything else. So let's go to scroll to page 11. And y'all might recognize this script. You might recognize the script is on the current page 11. So Javier, let's do you first calling me. I am at the agency. You're calling because you got a direct mail letter about your home insurance and you're giving me a call. All right, let me do it first as an example, then I'll have you do it next. Sound good? Oh, yes. All right, my man, you're giving me a call, but I don't know why you're calling. I see the phone ringing and I'm excited. Phone's ringing? Somebody chatted earlier. What do you mean about inbound calls for quotes, right? I know they're few and far between y'all, especially if you're not doing a lot of leads and marketing. We need to treat these as gold. Every inbound call, whether it's from a current customer, a new customer, prospect, whatever, referral, every conversation is an opportunity. So Javier's calling and I answer. Ring a ding ding. Uh, thank you for calling Craig Wiggins Allstate. This is Joseph. How may I help you today? Hey, good afternoon, Joseph. I'm calling because I received a letter in the mail in regards to you guys possibly saving me money on my insurance. Oh, wow. That is so awesome, man. I'm so glad that you called. Well, my name is Joseph. I'm going to be taking great care of you here. Honestly, you're the exact type of customer that we're looking for. That's why we sent you that estimate. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what we can do for you today. Make sure we give you the best plan and every discount possible. Uh, but I need just a few more details about your home so I can finalize the quote. Uh, tell me first, what is your name? So my name is Javier Orcasitas. Javier, Javier, so nice to meet you. Can you spell that last name for me, Javier? I want to make sure I, I get that in here just right. Sure. It's O R C A S I T A S. Beautiful. Javier, to make sure that I put together the best plan to protect you, your family, your homes, your cars, I need to get to know a little bit more about you so I can uh, recommend the right coverages and everything for you today. Make sure we build the perfect plan for you. Javier, let me start with this. Um, well, I might have an occupational discount for you, and I just need to know, uh, what do you do for work? All right, let's stop. What did I do? I went straight to building rapport. Guys, when you start the quote, Please do not just be an insurance robot. Okay, I can help you. What's your name? What's your date of birth? What is your address? Don't be an insurance <laughs> robot, y'all. Have a conversation with somebody as if you're catching up with an old friend. And what do I say? This is my little tagline. I'm building rapport. Get to know them as a person before you know them as a policy. Okay? So, dude, he didn't give me any objections, but what did I say? I'm so glad you got that estimate. I just need a few bit of details so I can get the final quote for your beautiful home. Y'all, we're trying to address the elephant in the room. What's the elephant in the room? They've got a quote with, with a number on it. How often is your real full quote going to match that number? It's probably not going to match that number. So we need to tell them right off the bat that it's an estimate, but be excited that they called. Y'all, your agent just spent a couple hundred bucks for that phone call. 
Seriously, your agent just spent a couple hundred dollars for that phone call. Take advantage. Javier, let's flip it, man. Flip it and reverse it. You're the agent. I'm giving you a call. All right. You don't know why I'm calling, but I'm calling the agency. Ring a ding, ding, ding. Hello. Thank you for calling <clears throat> Javier at Allstate. How may I help you today? Uh, yes. I'd like to speak with uh, David. So David is not in at the moment right now, but is there something I can help you with? Uh, maybe. I mean, he sent me this thing um, about my home, this letter about my home insurance. I, just, I wanted to talk to him. I mean, it looks really good. Great. I'm so thankful that you received that insurance estimate that we sent you. You're the exact type of customer we are looking for, and I'm excited to see what I can do for you today. I'll make sure that we build the best plan for you and give you every discount possible. Now, let's take a look at your exact details to give you an accurate, accurate quote for your beautiful home. What is your name and address? Oh, my name is uh, uh, Joseph Puckett. All right, Joseph, nice to meet you. And can I have your current address? Uh, yes, it is 123 uh, Main Street. Ah, okay, so, you know, I'm very thankful to be able to help you to, uh, today and to make sure that I put together the best plan to protect your home, cars, and your family. I want to get to know a bit more about you and your family along with your goals and objectives. It's important to me that you have the coverages you need, and this will help me design the perfect plan for you today. Okay, keep going. All right, and then, so with that being said, may I ask, what do you do for a living? All right. I just wanted to hear that kind of continuation. We're not going to go through the whole building rapport thing. What I love about you, Javier, is you're sticking to the script. What I need you to do is work on to where it doesn't sound like you're reading. But dude, really, really good. Just hear the difference. I'm so thankful to be able to help you today to make sure that I put together the best plan to help protect your home, your cars, and your family. I want to get to know a bit more about you and your family, along with your goals and objectives. I wrote this script. I'm thinking, dang, I don't like that. Right? Because I want to hear it different. I want to say it different. Javier, I'm really excited to help you. Seriously, very, very thankful. Now, to make sure that I put together like the best plan, everything that we need, like for your home, your cars, and really your family, I just need to ask you a couple of questions, get to know you, make sure I make the right coverage recommendations. We'll put together the perfect plan with every discount possible. Let me start with this discount. Um, do you have multiple cars, right? Tell me about you, what you do for a living. Are there anybody else in the household? Any kiddos running around or a partner or a spouse, right? So, dude, I love that you're sticking to the script. What I want it to be is just a little bit more natural, more Javier, like you're catching up with an old friend. But, man, good job. Let me give you an objection. Javier, Javier, um, I got to yeah. ask you, man, how accurate is this quote? You know, um, I've been baited and switched before, baited and switched before. Is this thing going to be accurate, like pretty close? So I understand that you're excited to work with our agency and for us to take care of your insurance. I mean, I am too. What you received in the mail was an estimate and an example. The great thing is that this typically only takes about five to 10 minutes to get your full information and details so we can prepare your accurate quote. And I can't wait to share what we can do for you today. Let's take a look. So I have you at 123 Main Street. How many square feet is your home? Beautiful. Really, really good. Following the script. Just work on making it sound like you're not, right? That you're just doing on your own. But I really, really like it. Good energy, good enthusiasm. I'll ask Mr. Dave, do you have any feedback from my friend Javier on how he answered the phone and got I, the call started? I, I think that that's a perfect talk, Pat. What, and, and what I want to point out to everybody is how that moves beyond that and keeps that continuation going. So instead of just mm -hmm. answering the question and leaving it there, waiting for the person to respond, you're moving on. You were saying, yep, that was just an estimate. Now, all I need to do is it's only going to take five or 10 minutes to get to the next, to get to what your real you know, estimate may be. So let's go from there. You know, you might want to even interject that, hey, we had to grab some public information about you. We don't know you specifically, but this will be a great way for us to get to know you and to be able to better protect you. That's right. And y'all just address it right up front. That's an estimate. It's an estimate. OK, we had a customer one time, Dave, swear to God, she mailed in a check with the letter. She mailed in a check <laughs> with the letter. And Kenzie, my girl up front, 
she brings it to me. She says, uh, Joseph, I can't find a policy for this customer, Mrs. Jones or whatever. I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, take that to Beth. Take that to Beth. That's a prospect. We sent a prospect in peace. Beth called her and closed her. I'm sure it was four or $500 more. But this woman was obviously interested in buying insurance. She mailed us a check, right? So anyways, Teresa. Teresa, Hello. thank you so Can much you for hear jumping me? on. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Okay. Um, so tell us, where are you from? What agency and what state? Well, I am in Bristol, Virginia, working for Dawn West Allstate. Wow, really cool. Dawn is awesome. Love Dawn. I She's love been her. part of our program for years. You're a I great just started agent. last week, so I'm very Wait, excited. Hold on. hold on. You literally just started your volunteer and oh. role play in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> Don't say <Holy> that. <laughs> I love it. You know what that tells me? That tells me you're going to go very far. I'm brave. Because you're not afraid to get uncomfortable. <laughs> to learn and grow. I'm proud of you. Oh, well, thank I'm you. I'm proud of you. Is this your first job in insurance? Uh, it's my first job in insurance, but not my first job in sales. Okay. Got you. Got you. Well, hopefully you can take your prior sales skills and turn it towards insurance. Make sure you're using our scripts and top paths, being Absolutely. so new to insurance. Yes. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use our wheel. It's a good I, wheel. Okay. I absolutely What's agree. I do not want to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do this. Um, let's say it's not a direct mail call in and I don't have a script for how to answer other call ins. Um, I, I will leave the building report script pulled up because I want to hear how you flow. Let's okay. just say your phone is ringing and you don't know why I'm calling, but your phone is ringing. Let's hear your greeting. Ring it ding ding ding. Hi, you've reached uh, Dawn West Allstate here in Bristol and I'm Teresa Sharp. How may I help you today? Uh, yeah, Teresa, I need to speak with uh, an agent. Well, you've reached the right person. I am the agent that you want to talk to. How can I help you? Okay, that was freaking good. Um, that was good. I'm the agent. I'm the person you want to talk to. Man, I love that, Teresa. Uh, yeah, I'm actually new to town. Was doing some research online, found you guys. Um, I need some quotes. I need some quotes. I'm, I'm buying a house in like three weeks. Um, oh, that's awesome. I need awesome. to get that taken care of. Oh, well, congratulations, first of all. I am so thankful to be able to help you today. Now, to make sure that I put together the best plan to protect your home, cars, and your family, I want to get to know you a bit more and about your family and along with your goals and objectives. So it's important to me that you have the coverages you need, and this will help me design the perfect plan for you today. So um, being, you know, having said that, what do you do for a living? Okay. Are you faking me? Is she like hustling me and pool? You've been doing this for years, right? You haven't been there like for a week. Just sales, just sales. Okay, so you've been doing sales that. forever. Yes, You've been there yes. for a week? Well, I mean, I it's like the you're same. you're punking me. You're like, you're <laughs> hustling me at the thing. pool table. That was gorgeous, Teresa Sharp. I'll ask David what feedback he has, but like how positive she was, the energy, like beautiful. The David. positiveness was, was amazing. And I think if she had her camera on, you'd be able to tell that she's smiling. I tried yes. to turn it on. Yeah, I don't know. But Maybe even it's then, but, setting, but my guess, my guess is, is when you were talking, you were smiling. And I was. You, you just had that confidence and you had that, um, you know, that, that you set the tone for the rest of the call right away. You're the person to talk to. You did great. Well, thank Amen. you. Now my challenge is just learning my products enough to be super confident that I can quote properly. Yes. And that will come with a lot of practice, right? A lot of practice yeah. and quoting more and more people. You know, you didn't learn to ride a bike by watching somebody ride a bike. Yes. You had to hop on the bike. You yes. had to fall down a few times. You had to think about quitting from time to time. And then your mom or dad or uncle or neighbor said, get back yeah. on that bike, girl. <laughs> and before you knew it, you were going all around the block. Nobody can stop you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So don't be, don't, don't think I have to be perfect. Just get on the bike. Start going. You'll fall a little. You'll learn a little. You'll get back on. You'll keep growing. All right. Thank you'll you. keep I appreciate getting better. That. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I look forward to hearing from you in a couple months to see how you're doing. Keep me posted. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you so much. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you to Javier. Um, guys, check out dartmailings.com. Dartmailings.com. David Banco and his team do a fantastic job. If you're not a member of CWC, shameless plug. Check us out, y'all. Check us out at craigwigginscoaching.com. We work with over 1,500 agencies all across the country, just under 9,000 total users. We have 
1200 something videos on the platform, live training every week, webinars multiple times a month. In addition to that, 100 documents and processes, the best scripts in the industry. If you're not a part of CWC, we'd love to get involved with you. But now let me pass it back to Dave. We got five minutes for Q&A. Five minutes for Q&A. Let me stop sharing and make our faces big. And I'm gonna go ahead and make Teresa a not a panelist, an attendee, and then same for Javier. And thank you both for volunteering. Change role to attendee. Okay, uh, Amy, can you put a list of the tips again? Amy, what we'll do is I'll, David, will you send me that PowerPoint? Yep. Will you send me that? I'll attach the PowerPoint, you guys, to the platform and the CWC live event or live training for 2023. I'll put the video and then the PowerPoint. That way you guys can have the whole PowerPoint. You can also listen to those calls a little bit better too. Um, Danielle, Danielle, I'd like to hear a good reason for why the direct mail is way less than what the quote comes to. Okay, let me ask David. Dave, why do y'all put like an amazing, best estimated quote on those letters to drive calls? And, and that's that's the, the same reason is to drive calls. We want to make them aggressive so we can get the calls, but we don't want to make them unrealistic either. So we want to make sure that we're getting them what we call in the ballpark. We want to make them so that they are aggressive and more like a perfect case scenario. They are achievable, but we don't want to we don't want to make them where they're too low, because if they're too low, then they fall in the ridiculous, not going to get calls. And if we if we make them too high or they're higher than what they're actually spending right now, you're not going to get any calls. So we want to be in that aggressive range, but still realistic. And guys, lots of people are shopping for insurance right now. Insurance companies are raising rates dramatically, tightening guidelines. Some carriers are pulling out of states. Um, be glad that the phone is ringing. You know, does that mean that we might lose a bit more of our customers than normal? Potentially, but that's okay because we're going to outright it. We're going to outright it. We're going to grow. We are going to grow, right? Because you're going to answer these calls and you're going to take them and work them to perfection and then follow the CWC sales process and scripts. From start to finish, and you're going to build the value. You're going to build the value as to why it's worth to do business with you. Not just because it's you, because you're nice, because we're local, because we care. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Seriously. You know what matters when somebody needs their insurance? Not how nice you are or how easy it is to get in touch with you. All that matters when somebody needs their insurance, boys and ladies and gentlemen, is the coverages, period. And we're going to make sure they have the right coverages because we're going to leave with liability and we're going to get them the coverage they deserve with you and your agency. I got another question here from Emmanuel. Can we add QR codes to the dark mailers? Absolutely. And it's highly recommended nowadays that there's more than, than just one way to reach you. I mean, you've got not only the call, which you definitely want, but you also have emails and texting, and you can even send them right to your quote page with QR. QRs are so cool, um, and they are really expanding in what they can do with all the dynamic codes, and now that they're now fully trackable, highly recommend to do it. I mean, we're, we're making that a, a mandatory part of every, every piece that we do. I think it's amazing. If y'all could generate a quote form, have a QR code that points to that quote form, guys, there's a lot of people that will open it up, see that QR code there, say, hey, click here, fill out this form, give me 30 seconds, see if we can save you hundreds of dollars on your insurance. They'll fill out that form. They will fill out that form real quick from their phone and then boom, they're in your lead system. You can start following up with them. Here's another quick tip that I always try to remember to talk about when we're talking about direct mail in particular. Y'all make sure you're checking your missed call logs in the evenings and in the afternoon and, and on the weekends. David's company is really cool because it logs every call that comes in. So it's easy to see if somebody called in at seven o'clock tonight when y'all weren't there or Saturday afternoon when they thought you might be there, but you're not right. After hours and weekend calls y'all, I bet it's a pretty big percentage. And if you're not you checking to, your call logs, yep. We have up to 20% of some agents whose calls end up in either hangups or missed calls or not leaving a messages. Yeah. Super important to, to do that. Our system will actually email you all the prior day's calls so that you can see all that were short, all that were answered. I mean, again, that's another 20% that you can add to the top. I mean, all those leads are people that the only way they reached you is if they had that letter in their hands. Mm -hmm. So it's a very um, Charlie, Char 
Yes, sir. I agree. And I love, I forgot that y'all do the call reporting. Y'all, they have so much cool stuff on the back end too, but that's for the owners to, to reach out to Dart to find out staff. You just grab these calls and you write some business. Charlie asked a quick question about compliant or approved vendors. He's with uh, the Allstate company. You can use Dart. You can use any uh, direct mail company as long as you don't use the Allstate logo or State Farm logo or Farmer's logo. But I'm not a, I'm not a compliance expert on all carriers. But y'all, David works with hundreds and hundreds of agencies all across the country from every carrier, every yeah. carrier. He can help you. He can help you, Charlie. Reach out. Uh, real quick, shout out. Ashton just sent a chat. I led with liability yesterday, sold a home policy that was a thousand more a year than what they were paying, but way better coverage. What felt good is he was so pleased with how much I cared. He even sent me referrals. Ashton, awesome. way to go. Good job. I love it. I saw another chat. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, Paige said, I'm one of Randy's team members. We memorize these scripts. They are the best. Paige Cato, I love that you're using these scripts and talk paths. I love that. That is awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're about 30 seconds, a little over. That's okay. I hope y'all got as much out of this as I did. David, you did a great job putting this together, and I love how you wove in the CWC stuff into it. Any final thoughts from you to everybody watching live and or on the recording? I'm happy to continue the conversations with anybody if they want to, they want to call or want to talk more specifically. But I also want to plug, you know, CWC here. I mean, our biggest agents and our most successful agents are the ones that are with this organization. If you're not, uh, it, it, please consider. There's lots of different ways that you can jump in and lots of different ways that you can um, become better. I mean, theirs is just like our uh, goals for you, which is to grow. And so get a hold of Joseph or anybody on his team. They have a fantastic group of people who are some of the most experienced people in the industry. Please reach out to them. They're great. Awesome. David, thank you, man. I really appreciate your partnership. And I look forward to seeing you in Vegas in a few months. At the yeah, event. we'll be there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to learn. But y'all, we got to get back to work. We got policies to write and people to protect. Get off this call. Answer the phone. Follow these six tips. Let's get the deal sealed and get your customers and prospects the coverage they deserve with you and your agency today. Let's get back to work and finish the month strong. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all next week. Take care. Get back to work. Bye-bye.